And I am very happy to welcome and introduce Anthony Delora. Anthony is a high school math teacher at Zeeland Public Schools in Zeeland, Michigan. He is an Apple Distinguished Educator, Instructional Technology Specialist, and co-founder of iBookHacks.org, which he will be talking about in much more detail today. We are so grateful for the opportunity to work with him and have him share his knowledge of EdTech and iBooks with our community. So, Anthony, without further ado, I will pass it off to you, and I'll be on the line if you need me. Great. Thank you very much, Emily. And uh, I'd like to thank EasyBib and your professional development series uh, for hosting this webinar and for inviting me to participate in it. I'm uh, grateful for the opportunity to share my love for EdTech and uh, specifically multi-touch books or iBooks uh, created by teachers for their students uh, in education. So excited to be here. Um, as Emily said, I am a high school math teacher uh, at Zealand East High School. We are home of the Fighting Chicks. I think that's um, a very unique mascot and we are a very uh, wonderful and unique community, uh, as many school districts are, but uh, we are uh, in our fourth year of a one-to-one -one iPad initiative. And uh, four years ago, in 2011, we rolled those out to grades 3 through 12, uh, and, uh, and to our teachers and to our students. And uh, for me, that was a very exciting time in my life. I had always um, wished for some sort of uh, technology in the hands of our students to really uh, empower their learning. And I would say um, since then I kind of dove in with both feet and I have really enjoyed the challenge of, of integrating the iPad uh, on a daily basis into instruction, trying to make instruction meaningful and more interactive. And uh, hopefully you get a sense of that as we go throughout the day. Uh, over the past few years I have also served our district as an instructional tech coach, uh, working with teachers in grades 3 through 12, uh, helping them to integrate the technology into their daily instruction. So it's been a really interesting uh, journey for me uh, to see how the iPad has been integrated uh, across the curriculum and to see how our teachers are, are leveraging that to technology to uh, make students uh, creators of great digital content, uh, to enhance their communication, the collaboration in the classroom, and uh, and it's been uh, it, yeah, it's been wonderful. So uh, this past year, I'm back in the classroom full time teaching uh, students uh, in one to one settings, and it's uh, it's been again a thrill to uh, to be working with students again. So um, as we go, uh, again, feel free to to ask questions. Uh, if anything I say, um, you know, you want me to expound on something or uh, uh, to clarify something, feel free to add, add that to the chat box, and, and Emily will interject that. Uh, on your behalf, and uh, know that there are some links. I believe this presentation is going to be shared uh, at the end, and those links and resources will be available for you as well. So a little bit about my journey. Uh, once iPads were uh, implemented into the classroom, uh, I really wanted to address the question of, of, of meeting every student's needs, because I knew as I stood in the front of my classroom uh, from behind my overhead projector and my transparency that I just wasn't reaching every kid. The differentiation wasn't happening uh, the way it could be and should be. So I started experimenting with uh, flipping my classroom, and many of us are very familiar with the idea of creating videos to supplement uh, student learning in the classroom and, and allow some students to move ahead uh, and allow some students to review. Uh, and really um, kind of fell in love with this idea of being able to um, you know, duplicate to yourself within your own classroom and then be able to uh, almost co-teach with yourself um, as students were watching videos that you were creating uh, and then be able to pull in small groups and do uh, further uh, differentiation based on the, the students' needs. Um, however, over time it just kind of dawned on me that I think videos just, you know, were okay but they were again a, another way of, of lecturing. And to me it just wasn't making learning interactive and it wasn't putting the responsibility onto the shoulders of the students. And so, that's when I, I started asking this question, well, what goes beyond this, this video and this flipped instruction? You know, if my students are just reading, then I'm only meeting one type of, of learning model. If my students are just watching a video, then again, I'm just kind of addressing one type of learning style. Um, and that's kind of where uh, e-publication uh, and e-pubs and e-books entered my scene. Um, at the time, it was uh, I was using Pages, which is an Apple software um, piece to uh, create um, text and images and videos uh, and then push those out to my students and my students could then interact with those on their iPad. 
Um, and, I, and that was good. That was it. Was now max, uh, mixing up some images and some, some text that students could read and learn from the reading. They could see some images, but they could also play videos and they could uh, jump to links. Um, but right about that time, it was January of 2012. iBooks author arrived um, in the Mac software suite, and uh, it was free for educator, free for anybody, uh, not just educators, free for anybody. And uh, and iBooks author really addressed this concern of mine. I, into thinking about how I could reach beyond just videos and clipped instruction and really create um, this interactive uh, and dynamic uh, learning experience for my students that could combine both text and images uh, and videos and interactives that gave students feedback as they progressed through the content um, that students could add to that content as they, they journeyed through the pages of that book. So, from there, it really started to transform my learning environment. Um, students became much more self-paced and uh, by using these teacher-created iBooks. And uh, again, I hope you kind of see that journey as, as we kind of go throughout these slides. So uh, some of you are very familiar with what iBooks are. You've perhaps heard them called eBooks. Uh, however, there is a, a, um, a clear kind of distinction between iBooks and eBooks. So eBooks are file formats. Um, that are published in uh, EPUB format and viewable on um, um, uh, text readers, essentially. So iPads, Nooks, Kindles, things like that. Um, however, iBooks are Apple standards for e-publishing, and they are a specific file format that are only viewable on iPad and Mac operating systems. Uh, and what iBooks do uh, that I, EPUBs don't is they really reach beyond just the, the text and the, the images and the video and they allow for that deeper interactivity. So there's a lot more of a, a, a dynamic element to what iBooks are. In fact, you're probably all very familiar with the App Store uh, and what apps do on your smartphone or your tablet or even on your computer now. Uh, you can kind of think of iBooks um, as apps packaged in book form. Now, that doesn't fully do them justice, but again, hopefully you'll see um, what iBooks are as we go throughout today. Um, so what goes in them? I've, I've kind of been alluding to that already. Um, essentially, an iBook looks very much like a book, and it would be familiar to us if we looked at the infrastructure of it. You know, it's set up by chapters. Uh, those chapters inside those chapters have sections. Inside those sections there are pages. And on the pages, pages can contain text photos and videos and widgets. Um, now widgets is a kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe fancy talk for an interactivity, uh, an interactivity. So something that students can push and pull and manipulate on the screen, uh, on the pages of that book. So you'll hear me refer to widgets quite, quite a bit throughout today because widgets are what really uh, raises the bar for e-publishing and what makes Apple iBooks so much different and so much um, you know, beyond uh, a typical ebook. Uh, there's links uh, and then there's assessments too. And then there's some hidden features that uh, just come built into iBooks uh, when students or the end user is interacting with a book. There's some, some great features uh, that I have pointed out here uh, on Apple's official iBooks website. I'm just going to click in and take you to now. So this is again can be found on Apple's website website, and I highly recommend it if you want some further information on what iBooks are. But uh, you'll see some great examples here of what, I, uh, what iBooks contain, uh, what they look like, and we'll be taking a tour uh, of these as well later on today. But uh, if you scroll down here, just beyond some of these basic elements that your iBooks can contain, it talks about uh, iBooks as being more than just a textbook and also being a, a study partner. And these are some of the, the features that often get overlooked when we're looking at some of these iBooks. Uh, the end user has the ability to do some highlighting and note taking. And from that highlighting and note taking, you're able to aggregate all of those notes into study cards. And that's a really powerful feature for our students today. I think organizing their, their sticky notes um, and their highlights and maybe some definitions or sample problems uh, that they might be completing is a really powerful feature uh, for our students. And it allows them to uh, then go back and, and review those at the end of a of the, of the unit or study. I'm just going to go back to our presentation now and keep moving on. So 
Uh, what's in the iBook store? So just like the App Store, the, the iBook store is, is similar to that in the way that it contains and warehouses tons and tons and tons of books. Now, in education alone, in the App Store, there's over 80,000 apps uh, built for education, right? And those are anything from reference apps to, uh, you know, interactive apps to um, fun apps and productivity apps and things like that. In the App Store, you can think of it as very much the same. Um, lots of great uh, educational, media-rich educational content uh, for that end user to, to download and interact with. And so we're going to take a little tour of the iBook store and just show you some things that you can uh, poke around and, and play with. So I'm going to go to the iBook store. And when you first open up that iBook store, you have the ability to search by category. Now, I've already filtered us down into the educational category. So when you come to education, you're going to see quite a few things here. Uh, and you can, again, sort by different uh, topic areas, subject areas. Uh, you can see some different um, works from your publishers. So we'll take a look at a few of those publishers here in a second. Why don't we just do that now? We'll click on the Common Core National Editions, and that will pull up a bunch of things from HMH or Pearson uh, or McGraw-Hill. Now, our publishers have uh, been getting on board here for quite a while and producing textbooks that are built for the iPad. And these are all very highly interactive. Uh, however, they're all very much like textbooks. You know, they're kind of mass produced for the masses, and uh, you know, teachers in the end end up still needing to tailor content for their students. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit more here, this is back in the front page of education. Um, you have uh, again just some more categories here, so you can jump into mathematics or social sciences or life sciences. So I tend to like the math section. I'm just going to jump into the math here. And this is going to pull up a bunch of iBooks that uh, students and teachers are available to, or sorry, that are available to students and teachers for download. And again, you're going to see some of that cost, some money, and some that are free. And we'll be taking a look specifically um, at some ones that are free that are made not only by teachers but also um, some quality uh, publishing houses. I'm going to jump back now. Uh, and then here's a hidden little gem here for you. If you are interested in finding some free iBooks content that's made by educators uh, for their students, then uh, in the education section you want to click on what well, I just clicked on there. It would say for educators. Now it's going to take you to the iTunes store. Uh, and in the iTunes store on this splash page that you get for educators, you want to scroll all the way over here to the right, and you're going to find this topic that says Free Books by Educators. So if you click on the Free Books by Educators, there's a whole collection of iBooks that have been created by teachers uh, around the nation uh, and really around the world that uh, have put their content uh, into iBook Store uh, for us, uh, for our students, for us as teachers, uh, for libraries to download and use. So there's some really good stuff in here um, that I just definitely recommend you get in. You, you download it to your iPad or your Mac and uh, start seeing some of the levels of interactivity that, you, uh, that teachers are creating. So we'll take a look at some of these books. Uh, in, uh, specifically, we'll, see, uh, we'll take a look at some of these books here by Vern Cleary uh, on history and some, uh, some math ones. There's one of my hey, math Anthony, books. Um, uh, sorry yeah. to interject, but we did have a question come in. Um, and I'm not sure if uh, if you know the answer to this, but Robin asked, um, does anyone know if there's a separate iBook store for Canadian uh, content? She's, a, she's an educator from Canada, and she mentioned that um, you know, there are different apps um, and iTunes for Canada. Do you know if that's the same for uh, the iBook store? Yes. Uh, typically, each country has its own uh, iBook store. Um, so if you go all the way down to the bottom of, I think, any page, in the iBook store, you'll see a little flag. And I think if you click on that flag, then you can jump to another country and oh, okay. see the content that they have in that country there. So cool. if I go Thanks. to Canada, Canada, then I'll be able to be in the Canadian iBook store. And so these are all the books that are available. Now, again, you'd have to kind of start to filter things out by category. So go down to in other categories, your education. Um, oh, and it looks like I don't know, maybe. Yeah, maybe they don't have an education category in Canada yet. So, Curious. so definitely okay. something to 
play around with, um, but just jump down to the bottom of any page and click on the little icon, flag icon, and you can jump to another iBook store or cool. iTunes store, I should say. And maybe that's uh, all the more reason for Robin to make her own iBooks if they don't have the education section yeah. just yet. <laughs> Absolutely. There you cool. go. Cool. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, definitely get in there. And again, that link is going to be provided to you. Um, one other thing I just wanted to show you was just some collection, and maybe you're very familiar with CK12 content. Um, but if you just search CK12 in the iTunes Store and you go to Books, and we'll just open up all of those. These, again, are all open educational resources, free for you to use and download, um, quality content in iBook format. Some of them have higher levels of interactivity than others. Um, but again, if you're looking for just your basic text and images and problem sets, then this is a good place to start. Okay, we're going to head back to our presentation. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an overview of the iBook store. I definitely recommend for you to get in uh, to that iBooks for educators that are made by educators. Uh, and again, that link is going to be provided to you at the end of the session today. Um, and we didn't dive into any of those books, um, but we want to do that right now. And I'm just going to take you through some of those books that were in uh, that specific part of the store. I just want to show you some of the levels of interactivity. And again, you might have some questions as we go throughout this time. Feel free to type those into the chat window. So I'm going to go back to iBooks. Uh, and this is my iBook shelf, uh, and I'm going to be demonstrating from a Mac. So the interactivity sometimes acts a little bit different from a Mac rather than a, a, an iPad. But for the most part, um, you'll see things uh, operate and function very much the same they would on an iPad. So I'm going to start off by demonstrating E.O. Wilson's Life on Earth. Now, E.O. Wilson has a huge collection. He's a Harvard professor. He has a huge collection of free uh, interactive books that um, he has worked with a, a design team over uh, maybe the last three or four years. And these books have quite a bit of detail. So we're really kind of starting at the top end of um, really engaging, high uh, interactivity, media rich. Uh, this is kind of like the best of the best iBooks. So as I open up a page and I just pinch down, I can navigate to the chapters by swiping across the top. So you can see a few chapters. Now down here at the bottom, I see that these are all the pages of that chapter. So I'm going to click to open up the page that I was just on. And anytime I see a little finger icon there, those items are interactive. So if I click to open it, I get a full page image. And these are some of the interactives now. So again, if I click on this, I'm going to see the different cell parts as I click on each one of these. And if I want to view all, I can view all of them at once. And I'm just going to send that interactive back into the book and I can keep reading. Now again, anytime something is bolded, there's a pop-up glossary that pops up and allows me to review that definition. And if I wanted to highlight something, I'm just going to drag across either with my finger on the iPad or with my cursor uh, in the Mac, and I can add a note to that. I'm just going to add a generic note, so study this, and send that away. So there's my little note on the side. If I wanted to go back and study that later on, I'm going to click on my little note icon up here at the top, and you'll see that this is the highlight that I just had and my note. And if I want to study that, I can click on study. And it creates a flip card. And uh, again, sorry, a note card or a flash card. <laughs> uh, it allows me to study. So this is just one of the built-in features um, uh, in iBooks. I'm going to close that back up and keep going through to show you some more of the interactivity in this book. So some really neat stuff here, some video. And this is, again, very high-level animation. And I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this through um, through the webinar. Hopefully this video all comes through. I won't show too much of that, but uh, I'm just going to close that back up, send that back in. I can also make bookmarks for myself. If I wanted to go back and um, remember something that I was studying on this page, uh, and I can easily reference something in the book. Here's that video that I wanted to reference. And see that again, just get a tour of that, the building of that cell, that organelle send that back into the book, and I keep moving on. So again, just high levels of interactivity. Students can push and pull. They can do a little bit more inquiry-based learning. 
and uh, it makes it very engaging for students. They see it's just something very different than what a static paper-bound textbook can do. So that's E.O. Wilson's collection uh, for biology it's called Life on Earth. I believe there's seven books in all. And they're a little bit hefty in size, but uh, very much worth it for a high school biology class uh, or anybody studying biology, perhaps even at the collegiate level. Uh, it would be a great book for them to download and, and study for free. Uh, while we're on the case of energy here, or sorry, uh, science, while we're on the content area of science, I want to jump over here to this book called Energy. And this is produced by KQED, and uh, they, I think, are out in San Francisco area uh, or California. And they produce books, again, that are free, uh, and they're very highly interactive. They do a great job of, of creating that engagement on the end user. So this is a book that we are using in our physics course right now uh, because we are studying different sources of energy. And I'm just swiping through here at the top to get to the different chapters. Uh, and I'm going to go back here to our solar energy. So we just did a unit on solar energy for our students. This was great. They could get to you know, see a, a real um, layout of how solar panels work. Uh, they get some great graphics and some displays and data that are all very interactive, um, some videos that are embedded along the way. And uh, it just makes it really, really uh, engaging for our students. So one little interactive here I wanted to show you was great. I thought you know, they could just play it right here on the page and students see this idea of this combustion, uh, combustion engine working right there while they're able to read you know, what's going on. We were looking at this uh, book on energy from KQED. Again, another great book for middle school, high school, um, physics, physical uh, science classes. Um, but we're going to jump out of that and go back to the library here and take a look at another science book. This is actually produced by a teacher. Uh, her name is B. Cantor, and uh, she is um, also an Apple Distinguished Educator. And all of these photos were taken by her. So she uh, took her iPhone and a little Olo clip, which if you're not familiar with an Olo clip, it, it essentially makes uh, your camera lens um, a magnifying glass. So she took all of these photos for um, this book that she produced on fly. And uh, just some stunning images and great, uh, simple little text, easy for her students to read. But as you swipe through, it just I think it's just so engaging. It just draws you in. Uh, and I think it builds that curiosity uh, even in your own mind about flies and dragonflies and um, you know, what makes them you know, what they are. So I don't know if I should play this video or not. Hopefully it won't clonk out on me. But you can see this dragonfly's mouth moving. That's just how fine this uh, videography is, and it's just a, a great book. And again, these books are free. Um, so that's some uh, examples of some science books. There's many more uh, to download and take a look at. Um, I'm going to send you another, or open up another one here, uh, jumping over to history. And these are the ones done by Peter Pappas. Uh, and Peter uh, is a phenomenal ad books author, um, guru out on the West Coast, and does a lot of work um, with his college students to produce these. Um, highly interactive, uh, very media-rich iBooks. We had some, some history ones here by Peter Pappas. I definitely recommend just searching his name in the iBook store and seeing what kind of great history content. Another uh, history guru there is Vern Cleary. And uh, Vern produces these, uh, a series of history books uh, in U.S. history. So excellent, again, for the classroom. Um, ELA, there's a ton of great ELA content out there as well. And uh, this is one particular that my colleague, Sean Jacob, has done. And uh, you know, he's very much interested in creating a, you know, a new type of grammar book. So this is all on adjectives and opening adjectives. And so as you just scroll across some of the content, he has got some great interactives. Um, he has spoken out all the words of the page. So if students would like to listen to him, read to him, or read to them, uh, they can tap to play that audio file. And it's a really powerful feature. He's got some uh, interactive reviews here uh, and some interactive keynote presentations. So again, students just tap to uh, go through this. Um, so he gives them immediate feedback on um, their questioning and their response and how they're doing. Uh, and they can send that right back into the book. So all of these keep the learner really close to um, you know, the learning. 
this is another widget that Sean has in his book uh, from the people at Book Widgets. And this is a third party uh, widget provider. And again, this interactivity allows for students to type a response here. And when they submit this, it actually goes to uh, their teacher, goes to Sean, and he's able to see the student response. So you can see here that these are short answer responses. There's also the ability to do uh, drawing responses here on the sketch pad, and uh, lots of other um, options for this quiz widget that Book Widgets makes. Um, so that's an example of, uh, of an ELA book. Uh, I'm going to open up a foreign language book now. This one's done by a guy by the name of Dave Stant. And David's done a great job of creating an incredible uh, book about uh, Spanish, learning Spanish. And uh, one of the neat widgets or interactivity pieces that uh, you can add into an iBook is audio. And so David's done that uh, quite a bit here. And if I just go to some of these slides here. And then you tap on it, you would hear him saying uh, buen dia or buenas or bueno. Uh, and then he has little interactions. So students can tap on the play arrow and he can hear that, uh, that greeting or that farewell being spoken to them. So it's a book that speaks um, the, the language of Spanish, which is great when you think of in terms of, of learning. Um, so that's uh, just some different um, foreign languages, uh, ELA. Um, and then I'm going to jump into some math because I think math has a great potential here as well. I'm going to open up um, one of my geometry books. So this is just uh, geometry on transformation. And again, as you swipe through the different content areas, um, you open up different pages, and you can engage with the elements. So in this particular page here, students are learning about uh, reflection symmetry. Uh, and this is a, another third-party widget from, or sorry, third-party. Uh, widget creator, provider, called Bookery. And Bookery also makes a sketch pad, so students would start to sketch out the reflection image of a very familiar logo. Um, and then send that back into the book. And they can continue on. Um, again, just interactive images, so students would start to learn and see symmetry, rotational symmetry, reflection symmetry in some of the images. Um, and then there's interactives, great interactives for students to uh, engage in when it comes to math stuff as well. So I'll go to uh, translation. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, and I, again, this is I think one of the unique things about iBooks created by teachers. Uh, you know, in a typical book setting, you have you know questions on one page and the answers on the other. Here, we get to ask students questions and then give them the space to kind of explore those questions. So for this example here, students needed to push and pull points around on this plane, and they needed to then uh, you know. Take a look at the relationship, the patterns, what's happening here from my points of my pre-image to the points of my image. You know, what is the connection between the horizontal and vertical component? Uh, and then over here on the right, uh, left hand side, students could then type in their responses. And again, when they submit this, this looks very familiar, it's a Google form. Uh, you know, they submit this response to me. Uh, the teacher is going to then see their responses and get that feedback from the student. Well, when they're done with that interactive, they send it back into the book and they can keep on reading. Uh, video is a huge component. Uh, these videos are all viewable offline, so these books work um, without Internet connection, which is a huge plus for a lot of my students that don't have uh, access to wireless outside of campus. So they download these books at school, uh, and then they can access these videos here. Um, these little reviews uh, allow students to get quick little help or checks. Uh, now, these are not connected to any learning management system, so I do not see the results that these students uh, are submitting. But it's, again, a good little check for them to see how they are understanding the concept. All right, I'm going to send that back, and uh, we'll jump into uh, back over here to our slide deck. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of, of what is, is possible when it comes to teacher-created iBooks. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, you know some of the benefit of learning when you start to look at adding text and images and video and interactives, and you really start to um, build a learning experience around multiple modalities. You know, it's not just that linguistic learner, it's not just that that visual learner, it's not just the auditory, but it's someone that can really um, have all of those different modes brought into and packaged in one you know very dynamic and engaging. Uh, interactive learning experience. And 
for me, that was a real aha moment in my life. And just thinking as my students were interacting with this, it was great. You know, it's not something that I have to tell them a relationship. You know, they can explore that relationship. They can learn through reading and doing videos and collaborating. Um, and so to me, that was just a, this moment of we should be doing this. I, I, you know, if I looked at the landscape of education and where we were going, there was all these shifting pieces, and I thought, for sure, you know, this is just what we need to be doing. And as teachers started to customize these iBooks, it just made sense to me, you know, that with a teacher-created, uh, you know, multi-touch book, that they're meeting their students. They're able to differentiate a whole lot more. Uh, and then inside the classroom, you could support a whole lot more, you know, that personalized learning or that project-based learning. Um, you could also support that mobile learning as students start to do a lot more of the learning outside of the classroom. Uh, and so for me, it was uh, this, this movement of I need to move away from this you know, mass-produced, paper-bound textbook and more towards this uh, teacher-created, uh, personalized learning experience that is interactive for them. Uh, and so that's kind of where iBooks are. And I think what we're starting to see is a whole lot more of that movement of teacher-created content it doesn't have to be on the book level. The word book kind of conjures up this, this fear in us that it has to be you know, a textbook, when it really doesn't. Um, a lot of the books that we showed are just um, smaller and interactive you know, units or themes. And, uh, and that's what it can be. It doesn't have to be 100 pages long. It can be 10 or 12 uh, and create a really great learning experience. So you might be wondering how we're doing all this. Um, and I, I mentioned earlier in the program that uh, iBooks Author is a free piece of software that's produced by Apple, uh, free for download in the Mac App Store. Uh, and it only runs on Macs, but uh, it is uh, you know, Apple's e-publishing software. And uh, really, it's, a, it's an incredible program. And it's simple, uh, very super easy and simple to use. And I'll do a short little demo here in a moment. You know, a couple of years ago, a good friend of mine, Steve Dickey, who's pictured here, um, he and I started having conversations. Hey, if teachers are going to start doing this, let's bring them together because there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of learning that can happen as uh, we come together and you know figure out how to do this the best way. Um, and, and some of those questions are around copyright and creative commons. And this is a new area for a lot of us as teachers because many of us grew up in, you know, in the analog era and this whole idea of you know, the ease of copying and pasting in the digital technologies, you know, is, is new. And if we're going to be creating digital content, we need to know the laws and the rules around that. So, um, you know, Steve and I started having this conversation, well, what can we do to bring teachers together, collaborate, create, and share what they're doing because uh, it's inspiring. It really is inspiring to see what some of the teachers are able to create. So the iBook hack was, uh, was founded and born uh, two years ago. We started with uh, just two initial events that were two days long. And uh, it seems long, but it's, it's really a focused professional development around creating a product for you and for your classroom, uh, for your students. And, and so we had uh, two of them in, in Michigan, and kind of word spread out, and um, people started getting really interested in it. And so actually that first summer, we ended up doing six of them. Um, uh, all the way from the west coast of California to the east coast of, of Maine. And um, people really started, I think, creating and being, you know, diving into this, um, this this platform. And so it was really neat. And so Dave Bass came along, and Dave is a good friend of mine in the local West Michigan area. And he and I said, you know, our two schools are uh, iPad schools. Let's see if we can write a grant and start moving this a little bit more forward. And so we wrote and received a grant for uh, our teachers to author this content to kind of make it available for others to use um, and get paid on top of that. And I think, again, we're starting to see that movement of where districts are seeing that this is a real space that we can move into and start to replace some of the curriculum that we've been purchasing um, in the past with, with teacher-created stuff. So uh, go ahead, Emily. You can progress on to the next slide. Um, so I got a lot of flack on why we called it PAC, um, and I guess <laughs> you know, people really thought, oh no, this you know, you're going to scare a lot of people away. They're going to think it's just for high-end users. But iBooks Author is a very simple platform, very easy to use. Um, but we wanted to call it a hackathon because it's just this combination, this idea of kind of bringing people together, and a combination of really working on a dedicated piece of of a product, um, specifically that they will be able to use. Uh, 
and we collaborate, we learn, we inspire each other, and the hackathon kind of was born. And I really do feel like it, it, it's taken on a feel of a hackathon because we kind of spread out around tables with lots of good food and some highly caffeinated drinks, and uh, we spend hours developing and then tweaking and building interactivities and um, finding images and creating videos. And so it's, it's just really, um, yeah, I think, engaging and thrilling time. And so and that's why we call it the hackathon. Uh, go ahead, you can move on to the next slide. Uh, and I kind of alluded this to in the past, and um, we do have a schedule on our website if you go to ibookhack.org, kind of the, the, the flow of it. But what we've really found is that teachers do need to understand copyright and creative commons, not only for their sake, but also for the sake of their students, because their students are producing presentations and um, you know digital content on a daily basis, and they also have to abide by um, you know, copyright and uh, Creative Commons licenses. So uh, we want to we spend a good amount of time uh, talking about that. We also talk about uh, just creation in iBooks Author. You know, all the just little uh, intricacies on design and layout uh, go such a long way in that end user experience. So we spend some good time um, talking about iBooks Author and how to design all templates, how to design interactivity. Uh, and then instructional design. I think this is one of the ways our teacher's role has really changed over the course of a few years with the, the immersion of technology in our uh, classrooms is, is we have to be thoughtful uh, on how we sculpt our curriculum, how we design our learning, digital learning experiences for our students. And so we really kind of take some time and, and, and focus on instructional design, what makes for a, a good and engaging uh, iBook. And the self-publishing piece is just kind of, yeah, it's, we want to encourage people that they too can be authors um, and author for a larger audience and have a great worldwide impact. Go ahead, you can move on to 14. Uh, and yeah, during this time, it's, it's all about collaboration, creation, and, and sharing. Uh, but certainly there's a ton of critical thinking that goes into it. Um, you know, when you're forced to think about how to communicate a piece of your content um, without verbally standing, or sorry, without physically standing in front of your classroom and verbally talking about it, it really, um, you know, it really forces you to think about how to communicate that. So I know from my own standpoint that I've really learned uh, how to be a better math teacher uh, when it comes to uh, teaching students now that I've thought through how to create a book. I'm doing exactly that as well. All right, let's move on to 15. Um, so I was going to do a quick little demo of iBooks Author, but I think it's probably in our best interest not to, because <laughs> I don't want to lose our screen and we're we're running low on time. So uh, highly encourage you if you have a Mac, download iBooks Author, uh, play around with it. Uh, really super simple. There's tons of great video tutorials out there. Uh, there are iBooks made on how to use iBooks Author. So download one of iBooks on iBooks Author and yeah, just jump right on in. Can we go on to the next one? Um, so again, just kind of reasons to to host a hack. Um, you know, if you are at a point where your school is looking at a one-to-one -one Mac book environment or a one-to-one -one iPad environment, think about how that could radically change. You know, where you're putting curriculum dollars. You know, are you spending money on you know paper-bound, analog, out-of-date, static? textbook and content? Or can we shift those funds to create our own content uh, that is easily updatable, that is easily um, you know, interactive, uh, that is tailored towards our students already? Um, and, and think about how that can really go a long way to, towards in, encouraging your staff uh, as a collaborator, um, but also encouraging your students as, as creative individuals themselves. So, um, yeah, let's let's move on to the next slide. And I want to leave some time for questions. I know you guys might have questions too. Um, yeah, let's go on to the next one. All right. Uh, so this was Sean Jacob. He's my colleague, uh, and he produced this book called uh, Writing Tune-Ups, which we took a little bit of a um, a tour of. Uh, and if we just go on to the next slide there. I think this is just really interesting. It's one of the great benefits. So I asked Sean, you know, after he had um, gone through the unit, just how did it go? And you know, he said out of the three classes, there was an A minus average across the the quiz and test scores, and students really responded well to it. And he said, you know what? 
never once did I need to lecture in class. Never once, you know, this was all stuff that students explored on their own outside of class. Uh, he got great results from the the quizzes that kids submitted, and he was able to repurpose his face-to-face -face time to focus on the more, you know, the deeper concepts, the the, the questions that students had, the, you know, the focus on more creative writing. And so he said, overall, it was just a great experience, and he's really glad that he spent the amount of time that he spent. Uh, I'm working on that iBook. Uh, can we go ahead and go to the next slide? Um, yeah, and this is one of the best you know things about it is that this is, is professional development. It's focused on you and you creating a product that you bring back to your students, uh, that you release that product to them, that you research how they use it, how they interact with it, how they do with it, and that you refine it, that you tune it back up and you redeploy it the following year and you keep building upon it. Um, you know, people ask me how long has it taken me to write some of those books, and I just tell them I'm I'm still writing. Uh, I'm still, you know, I'm acting as a as a developer of them, but I'm also acting as a researcher, uh, and I'm going back and iterating on those designs and uh, redeploying them to my students to help hopefully make that learning uh, experience better for them. Can we go on? Yeah, all right. Um, all right. Let's keep moving on. I'm not sure. I think we're at almost. Close. There you go. Uh, so here's some of the links there. Uh, if you want to take a look at some of those free teacher created books, and I think is that correct, Emily? That this slide sh uh, deck will be available yeah. to them. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm going to drop in uh, the link into the chat box once we're wrapped up with these slides, and then we'll also include it in the follow-up email, and it'll be publicly available, so anyone can feel free to share it. Great. Uh, and really, the last slide, I, I, you know, we can end on that and. Just take questions. Um, I do want to encourage you to get connected with some iBooks authors that are out there. Um, there's a great collection of folks in the iBooks Author Collaborative on Google+. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. We do an, a Twitter chat on iBooks chat uh, Thursday night. That's tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, feel free to follow that hashtag. Uh, and there's lots of great folks out there that are really excited about iBooks Author and what it's doing uh, in their own classroom. Oh, yeah, I guess I should mention the iBook Hacks. <laughs> no are, harm uh, in mentioning a plug. <laughs> no harm, right. So we are going to continue to put on iBook Hacks uh, this summer. We have uh, the original one. That's the one held in Zealand, Michigan, uh, here at our, our home school, uh, June 29th to July 1st. And it's a three-day event. And again, those three days are very packed full of not only learning, but it was a lot of collaboration, inspiration, uh, fun, and building a great product that you can take back to your classroom. There is an iBook hack in North Carolina. If you can't make the June 29th to July 1st, then June 8th to June 11th is also uh, an opportunity. Uh, or if you're out there on the East Coast uh, and want to attend a math uh, science and technology conference at Phillips Exeter, I am doing uh, a session focused on creating math textbooks. Uh, and you can find information there by searching Phillips, Phillips Exeter uh, Academy uh, Conference. And it is session number 19. Um, and then, then we have one coming up in Hawaii as well, and I'm not sure that one's going to be open for uh, the public, but uh, we are super excited that uh, it's really starting to uh, grow, and there's people all around the nation, uh, even outside the, the 48 states. Uh, you know, and not a bad place to have an iBook hack, I think. And not a, no, right, not a bad place to have an iBook <laughs> hack. Uh, 